Hello there YouTube and the retro gaming communities. Um, I'm back with yet another video and again I'm tinkering with some consoles. So today I wanted to show you something that uh, not a lot of people realise with regards to 50 and 60 hertz modding of consoles. In this instance the Mega Drive and the Genesis. So to show you this I've got first of all the excellent 240p test suite that's available for the Genesis that has all kinds of tests to let you know how well your display is handling uh, native 240p the old consoles output so I'll pan down now I'm afraid I'm not the greatest cameraman but so here we've got a Genesis now although this says Genesis on it I can tell you for a fact that it's not actually a Genesis. Inside that console there is a PAL motherboard. And it's currently set to PAL actually. It's got a switchless modification on it and it's set to PAL. And if I pan around again here, pan in on my Xtron RGB interface, if I just zoom in on that, see if we can see that. So we can see at the bottom the vertical refresh is 49.6 because the console is set to PAL. So again some of this may not show up too well on the video um, certainly not as well as it does when you're looking at it for real but I'm going to pan back to the TV and zoom out again to get everything in view and hopefully that will be roughly level. Let me just check. Okay close enough I would say and right now what I'm going to do is go into the scroll test like so and again with frame rates not matching between here and YouTube and everywhere else you won't all have to take my word for it that this scrolling is fairly smooth so we're at 50 Hertz here and what I'm going to do now using the switchless mod I'm going to switch to 60 Hertz okay so having switched to 60 Hertz the scrolling probably still looks smooth to you but to me I can tell you that it's definitely not now I'm just going to leave that for a couple of minutes and you should be able to see these white streaks going across the screen now these happen every time the picture loses sync or vertical lock with the TV and there's a stutter as it sort of recalibrates itself. Oh, there was one there. If you look at the edges of the picture you'll see them more clearly but these lines do actually cut across the picture and when you're looking at it on the TV you can see a stutter or a hiccup as well. Uh, now I'm going to pan down to the Extron interface again to show you something. And if I zoom in on you, now you can see the vertical refresh rate is 59.3 hertz. Now that's significant and you'll see why later. Um, I am going through the XRGB for this demonstration. That doesn't matter. This happens if I go directly through to the uh, the Mini or the DVDO Edge or even directly to the TV it's the same story everywhere the one exception is probably CRTs because they are not so picky about this particular issue but certainly any um, flat display whether you video processor it or you're just sticking it directly to the TV will more than likely show this issue okay let me pan back down to the Genesis now and I'm going to switch it off and I'm going to bring in another Genesis so a little bit of unplugging to do I'm going to keep that in shot so that you know there's no trickery going on here Heaven, there's something wrapping inside this one. I don't know what, but I'll take a chance. I'll open that up later. Right, so same SCART cables, same everything. 
just a Japanese spec Sega Mega Drive this time rather than a PAL Genesis in disguise as it were although it said Genesis as I said it was actually a PAL motherboard so flip this one on and this one doesn't have a 50 60 hertz switch so come back round put the other drive in there same as before notice now that the vertical refresh rate is 59.9 which is a lot closer to the NTSC spec and that's significant so back out again and play game it should take us straight back to 240p test suite and down to the scroll test and just a moment while my TV derps around there we go and this time you'll see that the scrolling is smooth well you can't really tell again because of differences in frame rate between here and YouTube but you'll notice that there's no lines cutting across the screen so the problem is effectively gone so by changing from a PAL machine switched into 60 Hertz to a true NTSC 60 Hertz machine we've effect effectively sorry, countered that problem entirely so that's something to keep in mind if you are planning on modding your PAL Mega Drive into 60 Hertz some issue you may encounter and you may be better off just finding a NTSC machine and modding it for PAL if you want so if you have the odd PAL game you want to play I've not tried yet with a 60 Hertz machine set to 50 Hertz in some instances that works better than going the other way around because it's not so far off spec but it all depends so when I have tried that I'll report back so that's it that's and obviously no disrespect to the people who do mod these consoles they, they do provide a valuable service but it's just something that you have to keep in mind if you're going to go ahead and have your console modded so yep there we go that's the end of this video and I'll see you all again next time for some more general ranting about old games consoles